If you've been learning about narcissism for a while, you're bound to have come across articles and videos giving signs and behaviors of a narcissist. But if you were to look in the Diagnostics Statistics Manual version 5 under Narcissistic Personality Disorder, these signs are not listed. Instead, several traits are listed. This can be confusing and can make the person wonder if a toxic person in their life is really a narcissist. This is because the DSM is meant for clinicians and lists traits, while most articles and YouTube videos are meant for the average person and list behaviors. The Diagnostic and Statistic Manual of Mental Disorders, or DSM, is a diagnostic tool published by the American Psychiatric Association. This helps clinicians diagnose disorders for the purpose of treatment. The DSM lists criteria that need to be met for the diagnosis to be made by a mental health clinician. What are narcissistic traits? A trait is a convenient way to describe a combination, pattern or cluster of behaviors. Being courteous or being optimistic is a trait. So too is being lazy or unreliable. For narcissistic personality disorder, the traits are those that are inherently narcissistic or toxic. To be diagnosed with narcissistic personality disorder, which is under cluster B of a DSM-5, a person must have five of nine possible traits, which are also called criteria, symptoms or core features. These are a grandiose sense of self-importance, a preoccupation with fantasies of unlimited success, power, brilliance, beauty or ideal love, a belief that the person is special and unique and can only be understood by or should associate with other special or high status people or institutions, a need for excessive admiration, a sense of entitlement where they expect unreasonable special treatment or automatic compliance from others, interpersonally exploitive behavior, a lack of empathy or unwillingness to recognize or identify with the feelings and needs of others, envy of others or believe that others are envious of him or her, a demonstration of arrogant and how-to behaviors or attitudes. You can think of traits as a way of thinking due to beliefs a person holds of how the world works, what their role in it is and what is expected of them. Our temperament that we have at birth largely affects how we interpret what happens to us. This is sort of like colored lenses we use to look at the world. Through these lenses, we try to make sense of reality from birth and then form core beliefs from our interpretation or understanding of reality. How we are treated as a child and our lenses or temperament have a lot to do with how our core beliefs of how the world works and about us are shaped. As we age, we experience new things that are interpreted through our unique lenses and shaped by our core beliefs to form new beliefs that reinforce our core beliefs. If the core beliefs we have are toxic, then our whole belief system becomes toxic. Sometimes to change our behavior, we need to get to and treat the toxic core belief that other toxic beliefs rely on. Thus, we first have to treat the top beliefs one by one until we come to the core belief, which can take years. Unfortunately, these core beliefs are so deep-rooted as I go back to our childhood that they are extremely difficult to change. And as our whole sense of self or who we think we are is based on these beliefs, we need to fundamentally change how we see the world and ourselves. Narcissists need to think they are less special or worthy and codependents need to think they are more worthy. Yes, if it was but that simple. The problem with traits is that they are not directly observable. This is what a lot of people struggle with when looking at the traits of a narcissist as listed in the DSM-5. Take for example, lack of empathy. What exactly does it mean and what does it look like? So to make it easier, we look at the behaviors that a person may exhibit if they have a certain trait. A person who has no empathy may for instance feel nothing about taking your paycheck and throwing a party while leaving you without money to get through the month. Or they may think nothing about lying to your best friend to ruin your relationship so that you spend more time with a narcissist. But it can be as simple as they don't care about putting food away or cleaning up after themselves when they make a midnight snack. As can be seen, one trait can cause multiple behaviors. As seen before, traits are what is listed in the DSM-5. Clinicians listen to the client about their behaviors or their partner's behaviors and then try to link them to a trait. For instance, the person may say they hate standing in lines because why should they waste their time waiting for someone else? The behavior of pushing to the front may be linked to entitlement. If enough behaviors are linked to enough traits, the clinician can make a possible diagnosis. But this takes time 
and the need for the person giving the information to be honest, as well as for the clinician to link the behaviors correctly. For the same behavior, say not wanting to stand in line, can have multiple explanations. It can be entitlement, but it can also be because the person has a phobia of germs. So it is important to get the why behind a behavior. But victims of narcissistic abuse often do not have the time or energy to analyze every behavior and link it to a trait to make an assessment. And sometimes victims do not even know a behavior is toxic or they think only they experience it or that they caused the behavior in their partner. This is where a list of narcissistic behaviors can come in handy. If you were to take the most common behaviors narcissists display and put that on a list, victims of narcissistic abuse can easily read it. It is something they can see in the narcissist and easily answer yes or no to. It takes the guesswork out of things because victims of narcissistic abuse often struggle with doubting themselves due to being gaslighted by the narcissist. But the list of narcissistic behaviors is not without problems as well. First, it would only be a list of common behaviors. A narcissistic partner may do some of them, or depending on the list, none of the behaviors. They may also do stuff not on the list. This can cause victims to think their partner is not a narcissist. Say not putting food back and cleaning up after making a midnight snack can be due to lack of empathy and caring about others. But the narcissistic person may put the food away, not because they have empathy, but because they worry that cockroaches will walk over the food at night and they will get sick. They may display a lack of empathy in other ways, such as brushing their teeth and spitting in the wasp basin and not rinsing their spit away. But if you only focus on one specific behavior, not putting food away, you may think your partner is not a narcissist and that not cleaning the wasp basin is not a toxic behavior. Then there is the problem that a behavior can be as a result of another mental disorder, as there are often overlap in behaviors. Another problem that is often found with victims of narcissistic abuse is that once they see a list of narcissistic behaviors, they try to get the narcissist to change their behaviors. This is a fruitless exercise, as you need to change the trait fueling the behavior. But to do that, you need to change the beliefs they hold that fuels the trait, which is mission impossible, or for the normal person, not going to happen. Even if you were to change one behavior, that trait will express itself in another way. They may start putting the food away at night, but then leave the kitchen lights on. And as listed before, you may need to change a core belief to change a behavior, but several other beliefs rely on this core belief to be true. So you first need to address these other beliefs layer by layer before you can address the core belief to change a behavior. And normal people just are not skilled enough to figure out what beliefs are on top of a core belief and then get the narcissist to change the beliefs one by one nor does a narcissist want to change. Even if they want to change, you are talking about beliefs ingrained for decades. If you change that, you become a new person as your entire way of thinking will change. Thus, even with hard work, often only top layer beliefs are changed, resulting in marginal changes. That is why they say, on average, we don't really change the core of who we are as we get older, unless you do a lot of inner work and self-reflection. What lists may help victims with. Lists of narcissistic behavior are good for helping victims realize other people are experiencing the same things. That they are not crazy or imagining it. That people who are supposed to love you actually do things like this to you. If you want to dive deeper, you can then take a behavior, such as a person not saying sorry when they hurt you, and ask why they would do that. You can then link this behavior back to a trait that can fuel the behavior such as a lack of empathy for a person refusing to say sorry when they hurt you. Then you can say, what else may a person who has no empathy for someone else do? This may then help explain why they ate your chocolate cake the night before your birthday party and acted as if it was no big deal. Note that just because you may understand why they behave in a certain way does not mean you need to forgive them or accept their behavior. And... Although their behaviors are fueled by beliefs, they still choose what they do. It is like an introvert not liking parties. It may be hard for the introvert to go to a party, but they can still choose to go if they want to. For a narcissist, it may be hard to say sorry, but they can actually do it. It is just easier for them to blame you than to say sorry. 
and it's easier for them to explode into rage and deny them hurting you than to deal with their own emotions and make things right with you. Knowing that their behaviours are due to a way of thinking from beliefs they hold can help you let go of a hope that they will just one day realise how much you love them and then suddenly stop their abuse. It can help you lower your expectations of them. You may then say, I know it is a waste of time getting them to say sorry or to put the toilet seat down or to close a toothpaste cap because they just don't care. The things you see them do and have a problem with are the tip of an iceberg of a problem far larger than you can deal with and in fact far larger than most therapists can or are willing to deal with. This may help you then to decide to leave a narcissist or to lower your expectations of them and try to find ways to work around them to make life better for you. If you can figure out what triggers them, you may be able to improve your interaction with them if you cannot leave them. However, trying to figure them out should not be a reason to stay, as they are more volatile than Francium 223 and more unpredictable than a South African Cape Buffalo. See the video suggested to you right now to discover why narcissists break your stuff.